I personally, so before we tore down the Mach-E, it's probably the car I've driven the most outside of the, the Model 3 that's the company's here. And I really enjoy the Mach-E. I like the way it looks, like the way it drives. My biggest complaint is I like the horizontal screen versus the vertical. So I want them, I want them to flip it, but that's just me. So, and I can say like Tesla, Ford listens to, they listen to criticism and they're willing to make changes and adapt. But what, so as an owner, what improvements do you think uh, Ford needs to make to the Mach-E from a consumer perspective? Faster charging, honestly, to keep up with everything <laughs> that needs to come. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing um, is is charging. You know, the, the ranges uh, could be slightly improved. Um, we, we could get a uh, California Route 1, which they're actually discontinuing for 2024, but you can get a, a longer range Mach-E that's 300 and some miles of range. Uh, we have the GT Performance Edition, which is rated at 260. So we'd, we'd love to see that increase. But um, access to the Tesla supercharger network or just better charging doesn't have to be Tesla. Um, that's one big improvement as well as the uh, 800 volt or whatever you, they need to do to get fa faster charging. So, um, you know, for us, it hasn't been a big deal because we charge at home 95% of the time. Um, but we see, you know, like the Taycan and the, the e, e Gimp cars from Hyundai Motor Group. And it's nice, you know, to be able to pull in and, and pull out so quickly. Um, so, I, you know, I think that's it's all around charging, better charging network, better charging speeds. Um, and then everything else is minor, like whether you have a vertical or horizontal screen, that's always going to be down to personal preference, um, unless you do Fisker and have it rotate on you. But, if it could stay like that when you drive, though. Yeah. It's only when you're stationary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, charging is like everyone's issue at the moment outside of Tesla. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I mean, like we're, we've been really happy with uh, the technology in the Mach-E. Um, I'm excited by Ford's, I think they're calling it the Ford Digital Experience or the Lincoln Digital Experience. So um, they're moving away from the Sync 4A system and moving into Android Automotive. Um, and that's, that's going to be across the board. So I'm excited by those changes and the capabilities that's going to to give it as well as better hardware underneath. So it won't be laggy um, compared to what we have now. Um, and they're keeping Android auto and CarPlay, which is a big deal for me. Um, that is big. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, we, we know that there's always going to be changes and updates and, um, but we're, we're really happy. Um, the two of the things that we really like, or that I really like about the, our current Mikey is the Magna ride suspension. It's just so freaking good. Um, and we're really happy with Blue Cruise. Um, so it's, it's been, uh, we've, you know, as we've started reviewing other cars, we've reviewed a lot of systems from a lot of companies and, it, you know, all of them have their own issues, but I, like, I just like the way Ford does it. It's just feels like it's a, a collaborative system so that you're monitoring it, but you're not, you know, exactly what it's going to do. Um, so it's like, we've been really happy with it. How often do you use Blue Cruise? Because I personally, if someone like, I don't own an EV yet, but like I never use cruise control. Like I'm not a big road tripper. If it's over four hours, I prefer to fly. Um, so how often do so you actually use I, Blue Cruise? So I uh, have a doctor that is in uh, Santa Ana. So that's an hour away and we have to go there pretty often, like sometimes once a week. Um, so I think you use it like, 98 percent of the time yeah, on the drive as, the moment you get on the highway as soon as we get out of the neighborhood and we're on the the highway um i turn it on and 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 i and i hear you because like i had a wrx and i'm like i don't like automatics i had my stick shift and i don't use cruise control and part of that was because i may have been exceeding the speed limit and it was like i don't want to have to hit the brakes to slow down anyways we don't talk about that um <laughs> but it's like once we got the Mach-E and once we had Blue's, uh, Blue Cruise, it's like changes the whole thing of where, especially going up into Orange County, Southern LA traffic, where it's like, 
all of a sudden I just turn it on and I don't have to worry about it. Somebody cuts me off. It's going to slow down. It's like it, it handles everything so much better. Um, it just makes it so it's like, uh, it's like a relaxing drive and we talk and we make videos and just makes it so much easier. Yeah. And part of it really is that we have this repetitive drive that's on long distance on the highway. So I'm sure like other people who have long commutes that are like longer than half an hour on the highway probably enjoy Blue Cruise too. Yeah. We have it on our lightning here. Um, but, you know, I, I rarely go on expressway with it. So I've only used it a handful of times and it's nice when it works. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing too, is like, cause like with blue cruise hands free, it's only on the freeway, but we can do hands on on like, um, any, any road where it detects the lines. But I'm like, I, I don't like why, you know, especially because like, you know, almost none of these, you know, systems stop at a stoplight um when you have that that system on or like blue cruise on so it's like it does like to me it just doesn't like i don't use it in those situations around city driving or anything like that i know fsd works in those um but even then like our short test with it i was like i don't think i would use it that much it just freeway driving is just a another another realm and it just it makes it relaxing <laughs> 